Today is the day we say goodbye to my social life. Hello and welcome to my channel. You're new here because this is my first video. Hello, my name is Carly and uh, this channel is basically just gonna be a bunch of stuff about my life, but mainly like academic stuff, I guess. Uh, I am trying to apply to law school for not, I guess this cycle, but for admission to fall 2022. Um, I'm aiming for a combined degree in a master's of health administration and policy uh, and the uh, JD law degree. But this video is a little different than I thought I'd be filming today. Uh, I got my June LSAT flex score back today and I did terrible. So bad. <laughs> so bad. Um, so just to give a little rewind before I tell you the score, I'm smart. <laughs> Not to say that anyone with this score isn't smart, but just I had higher standards for myself. So I took uh, two diagnostics. They were both mock LSATs proctored and timed by Princeton Review done by my school because I have a minor in law and justice. And so part of this pre-law program um, lets us experience law school admissions early, which is great. But I did the Princeton Review two mock LSATs. The first one, the proctor, it, it wasn't in like Proctor U, it was just like a Zoom and there was a proctor on the Zoom. And the proctor wasn't timing my logic game section correctly. So I ended up having like 10 extra minutes in logic games. I ended up only getting like two wrong. Um, overall on that one, I think it was a 153. And then uh, I like did really bad on logical reasoning and reading comp, more so logical reasoning. And I knew it could improve mostly on that one. Um, so that's what I mainly studied for, for the LSAT that I just took. But uh, the second mock one, I got a 146. And I, for these, neither of these I studied for, they were both cold diagnostics. I think I looked up like two YouTube videos to understand more about the test before I took it. But one was right before Christmas and one was right after Christmas. So I work retail, those are very busy times. Uh, so I didn't have any time to like do any prep. Fast forward to um, May, no, April. You know what, I'm gonna book the uh, June test and I'm gonna study. I know my starting place. I'm good. Um, <laughs> so now to the day that my LSAT score is released officially, I got a 142. After studying, when my diagnostics were a 146 and a 153, but like loosely a 153 because one of the sections I had more time. Um, I'm pissed, needless to say, but this is a learning experience. So this video is going to be me laying it out for you, how I felt about my LSAT flex, why I think I did so dog poo, and how I'm going to fix it for October. I'm very much a one and done kind of person. I really thought that I would be through with this by now. I didn't think that I would have to do it again in October, but here we are. Uh, I haven't booked October yet. I don't know if you even can yet, but I am going to. Uh, I'm also gonna see about accommodations. So I suffer from a migraine disorder where I have migraines with aura uh, at least once a week. I'm on medication for it right now, but the medication makes me very sluggish and unable to focus. Um, I just kind of like drift off. <laughs> so I think that had a hand in my struggles with timing on the LSAT. I didn't find that I had troubles this time with timing, but clearly I should have had more time to analyze the answers I was picking because I got a 142. Hello. While I'm editing, there is one thing that I forgot to say, and it's very important. I had accommodations, well, not time accommodations, but I had assistance uh, for a hotel room because I didn't have a private space. I live in a very small apartment. What you see is pretty much it. The couch, the two rooms, the kitchen is right there, and that's it. Um, and by kitchen, I mean counter. <laughs> but I didn't really have a private space. 
I have a cat who's needy, who doesn't leave me alone, <laughs> and I don't really have like a proper desk. I just have um, this thing happening. So that probably had to do with it. I wasn't at home and you wouldn't be on a regular test anyway, but um, I don't know, maybe that affected my performance. And uh, there was a lockdown here when I was studying the whole time I was studying, but I still had to work. So that was stressful. Uh, and uh, libraries and cafes were closed. So on top of not having a private space to do the test, I also didn't really have a very private space to study. I studied in my bed um, or at this little desk thing. I didn't really have a place to study that was like a full table that I could lay out my stuff. So that probably had a lot to do with it as well. At least this time libraries are open so I can go somewhere and do an actual full length time practice test. I could only ever do the sections timed individually before to practice because I didn't have the uninterrupted time to do that. So now I do. So I think, so I took Seven Sage for three months, but I didn't really do a full month of studying out of the three months. I think it was more so two full months of studying, one month of like here and there kind of learning the basics, but clearly I didn't learn them very well. <laughs> I think Seven Sage was great. Um, I f f thought I learned a lot in logical reasoning uh, during drills. I was getting no more than three questions wrong out of the five. I know that sounds bad, but that was like once in a blue moon I would get three out of five and usually it was like midnight and I needed to go to bed but usually I was getting like four to five and even five out of five on the timed section drills and so I thought I was learning well there. The games were pretty good um, but I did find they didn't really like give much expansion on the strategies for games. I found that it was fast paced. Like, I just really think the game strategies they use didn't suit me. Like the chain links, like that worked for some sequencing games for me, but like others, I tried to do it and it just messed me up. And I was so much better just figuring out on my own. And I think that was my main issue with Seven Sage was that I put so much faith in the course that I didn't really come up with my own ideas based off what I was learning. And I think it changed my way of thinking for the worse, clearly, because I got 142. <laughs> so I think that I would have been better off if I had just self-studied or because I kind of did self-study with Seven Sage, I guess, like I took the course, but like it was still very much self-directed, but I just think I put too much faith in the course and thought it was kind of like, um, a school class where I was like, oh, if I just listen and be attentive, I'll absorb the information and I'll do it. And uh, it did me more harm than good. It really did. I didn't think the LSAT I took was very hard when I took it, but clearly, yeah, I just find it comical at this point. I didn't even cry yet at all. I didn't even cry when I saw the 142 and I'm a bit of a crier. Uh, I kind of just laughed because who expects their LSAT score to be lower than their diagnostic by quite a bit after they've put two, three months into study. So my plan tonight, so I, I'm all fired up. Okay. I'm ready. I'm motivated to do it well in October. <laughs> um, for my combined program though, I can do the first year of the masters and then go into the JD the next year so I can, if I don't get in this cycle and I'm applying in October no matter what. <laughs> I just want to apply and have it over with um, and just see what happens, you know? A lot of the time in my life, I'll fail at something and then something better will come out of it. Or I'll think that nothing's gonna come out of something, but I'll try it anyway, and then something actually happens. 
and I'm hoping that this is one of those moments because if it's the only moment this doesn't happen, I'm gonna be so mad at the universe. <laughs> um, but anyway, so long story short, it's okay if I don't get in this year because I can do the first year of my master's program with my LSAT score and get in and then apply to the uh, law school in the first year of my master's and still do the combined program. And they say that at my school you have a better chance of getting in that way because they see that you're dedicated, that you'll stop at nothing to get that degree and they'll have your um, final year's GPA instead of just your first three years. So I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm also okay with not getting any scholarships. I'm fine with that. I don't it's not that I wouldn't love them, but I don't need them. I'm just focused on getting in to law school. And if anything, this experience of getting this tragic score has reaffirmed that this is actually what I want to do. You know, I could have just bawled my eyes out. I was at work, so I couldn't really have, but I could have just gotten upset and just been like, you know what, this isn't for me. Clearly, I'm not good enough to go to law school. I'll just do something else. I'll find something else. Obviously, I'm not passionate about it if I couldn't swing the score. I'm really glad that wasn't my initial response. My initial response was like, LSAC? Fuck you. <laughs> I'll see you in October. <laughs> um, I think I'm rambling at this point. I hope that the people watching this video are like me and just like to feel like they have someone to talk to. Um, it's hard to explain these things to people in my life because they don't really get it. I have a few friends that took the LSAT, that plan on going to law school, have gotten into law school, um, and that's been really helpful. But I like getting a broad uh, spectrum of ideas and then turning them into my own. I think that is where Seven Sage failed me, is that it was very much a one path, and I didn't realize that it wasn't the path for me until after I took my LSAT. But luckily, schools take your highest score and they don't average them out, so it'll look even better when I have a 142 as my first score, and then 20 points higher. <laughs> it happens, maybe not in three months, but it happens. And regardless, again, I'm applying with whatever I get. My school's median is a 160 to a 164, but I've seen people get in with a 158, 159 and have my GPA. Uh, I'm also listed as a minority through the school. My mom is Syrian. I'm a woman, so that gives me a bit of a better chance as well because they try to fill their seats 50-50. And I'm a resident of the area that the school's in and they also try to keep seats in the class for people of the area as well. So, with all that being said, I think I'll be fine. Uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know, LSAC ain't shit, and we got this. And just because you take a course doesn't mean you'll get that 165. You actually, fun fact, have to put the work in. <laughs> Oh, uh, I just still can't believe I got a 142. <laughs> and I did the work. I did. I could have done more. I will admit. I did a lot of stuff late at night. Um, a lot of stuff. I, I worked two jobs, so I had to work around that. And I didn't stick to a schedule. I made myself an in-depth schedule when I was motivated. And then I lost motivation really quickly. But I'm hoping now that I have this experience that it'll keep me motivated. Because now I'm beating myself. And I'm a competitive person, so before I had really nothing to start at other than my diagnostic, but I didn't know what I was doing then. And at one of them, again, I had more time on a section that people struggle with timing the most. So, I hope that whatever I said made sense, <laughs> because I feel like I just ranted. But this is kind of a channel introduction, I guess, and that's just who I am. I rant, so if you don't like that, then I guess you don't like me. <laughs> But um, anyway, let me know if you want to see um, a mistakes I made on the LSAT video. I didn't see my answer sheet, but I think I have an idea. Um, 
what I'm gonna change about my study method. Let me know if you wanna see that. Uh, let me know if you wanna see a video with me making my study schedule and what I've done to prepare. Or if you just wanna see videos about my journey and you like hearing me speak. Peace.